Hello and welcome to Hippo Express Training 2. My name is Earl Mina and I work with the training and tech department with Hippo. Here's a look at the Hippo CMMS training path in Express 1 and 2. You'll learn the basics of the program, topics such as navigations, users, demands, scheduled work orders, reports, and more will be covered. After you complete Express 1 and 2, it's time to meet your trainer. If we're meeting just once, we recommend training your admin users. If we're meeting for a second time, we'd like to train your resources. And we can also schedule any one-on-one -on -one training specific to your needs. Afterwards, we hope that you become Hippo Pro. And if you have any questions about how to use your Hippo, uh, please do not hesitate to contact us at support at hippocmms.com. Here's a look at today's agenda. Today's training will be about an hour long. All of our attendees will be muted. We will go through a brief tutorial beginning with scheduled work orders, how to create a PM, either calendar-based or meter-based. We'll look at work order templates. We'll look at work order search. And then we will finish off the webinar with a look at how to run reports. At the end of the webinar, there will be a set of questions that will follow. Along with these questions, you will have an opportunity to ask any additional questions, add any extra comments that you might have. These questions will go out to our support team, and then we will reach out to you with answers along with recording of today's session. All right, so let's jump right in there. Um, again, to access your HIPPO, your URL is clientid.hippocmms.com or clientid.hippocmms.ca. Each user will have their own unique user ID and password. We'll click Secure Login. And this will take us into the HIPPO program. Now, the first screen that you will see is the Enterprise screen. Uh, I'm currently using the standard dashboard, but users may have access to Advanced um, and Calendar dashboard. Uh, this is what the Advanced dashboard looks like. And here is a look at the Calendar dashboard. Uh, we'll be switching between dashboards as needed, but I will stick to the standard dashboard for today. Now on the right side of the screen, we have details related to our facilities. It's an overview about how many PMs, how many demands, what's overdue, um, anything that's say, critical in each, one of, in each one of my facilities. In the center of the screen, I've got the same information presented in a table format. Now, the information on the right of the screen um, also act as a link to access the facility. Alternatively, I can click on the facility name to get into the facility screen. Now, focusing on PMs, uh, PMs are your scheduled work orders. PMs are created at the facility level. At the enterprise level, um, that is where you make more back-end decisions, more top-level decisions about how you're going to run the HIPPO program. Um, you will know that you are at the enterprise or facility level based on the menu on the left side of the screen. For example, I know that I'm at facility because these, uh, this menu says facility admin. Now on the right side of the screen, um, again, it's another overview. In the middle of the table, I can see exactly what my work orders are. Sorted by work order ID number. You can sort by name. What current status is it? Um, what type of work order? Is it a demand or PM? Um, today we are going to focus on PMs, which again are our scheduled work orders. Now, any details of, of our facility is stored under facility admin. When I click on this panel, I'll get a list of sub panels that contain information about this facility. Uh, for example, this is where my locations, equipment, parts, and scheduled work orders are stored. We're going to click on scheduled work orders because that's our first topic of the day. All right, now as I click on the name of the scheduled work order, notice that it will appear um, at the top of the grid. Sorry, name of the panel will appear at the top of the grid. Remember that you have control buttons located uh, in the right section of your screen. These are directly related to your permissions. For example, I have permission to add a new PM 
I've got permission to delete a PM. I can modify save my changes by using the save button and the X icon is the button to return you back to your facility screen. We're going to focus on creating a PM right now. So let's click the new button. Now, when you make a PM, uh, you have two options. You can create a new PM from scratch or you can create a PM from a template. Uh, templates will come a little bit later in today's training. For now, we'll learn the basics on how to make a PM from scratch. Let's make sure we select this option and then click OK. When you click OK, an empty new data field will open below the search bars uh, and it'll open up at the top of the grid. You have mandatory fields. These fields are outlined in blue. Uh, the first field you have is name. Now, name is um, the first piece of information that your resource is going to see. So we recommend naming your PM um, what needs to be done and when. For example, if I'm doing an AC unit inspection, I would also indicate um, what is the reoccurrence, what is the schedule. So we do this on a monthly basis. Your next column is schedule category. Here you will determine if this is a calendar-based PM or if it's a meter-based PM. Uh, for now, let's look at calendar. We'll visit meter-based PMs later in the training. Next, we have type. So type refers to equipment, location, or vehicle. Depending on which type you select, the next field, which is associations, will show you a list of all of those items, all of those associations that fall under equipment, location, or vehicle. Now the items that appear in this list are the same information that will appear under the locations, equipment, or vehicles panel. Um, you're able to select one or more association. I can scroll through this list or I can make use of my search field and type in the name of my equipment. Next column is description. So under description, we type in a brief description of what needs to be done. Work category. Work category is a way to categorize your work orders. Uh, for example, maybe we'd call AC unit inspection uh, work category of HVAC. Now this comes up in a lot of places. Uh, the purpose of this will allow you to run a work order search or run a uh, maintenance history report. For example, I want to look at all completed work orders related to HVAC in the past month. That's the purpose of having work categories within HIPPO. All right. So now that I have my mandatory fields completed, I always recommend click save. It's best to click save when you're entering a lot of information. Uh, depending on what you name your PM, it may reorganize itself uh, alphabetically in this list. So just keep an eye on where it is. Luckily, this is at the top. I'll still check mark it so I know where I'm at. Now you have um, additional optional columns on this grid that you can complete. Uh, we'll look at all of them. So the first optional field is called subcategory. Think of subcategory as a more specific work category. Uh, for example, if this is HVAC as a work category, I can name my subcategory summer or winter, or I can be more specific, uh, fan, uh, cooling unit. Uh, it's a way for you to get a more specific work category for your PM. We'll call this summer. Schedule. So schedule is an important one. This is where you will determine um, where your PM will generate, uh, sorry, when your PM will generate. Now click the add button to open up the edit schedule window. So here you can see there are a few options. Um, I can generate my PM on a one-time basis. One time refers to the date that appears in this uh, form here. 
you can generate your PM on a daily basis. For example, I want this to occur every day. Weekly basis, uh, Monday to Friday, or for those of you that operate every day, you can select every day for X amount of weeks. Seasonally, and then I can also select monthly. Uh, monthly can also be used for scheduling any annual PMs, biannual PMs, quarterly, etc. Use the monthly tab. Now, this PM is a monthly inspection, so I'll stay on this tab. I can individually check mark each month, or I can make use of the check all button and select all the months that it applies to. Now, I can also be specific on exactly when I want this PM to generate. So I've said every single month, but I can determine if this will generate on the, maybe the first day, or I can do the first Wednesday of each month. Do not have to set an end date. Um, if you do not set an end date, your PM will just continue on until you delete or either change the end date. Um, your next step would then be to uh, click validate. Actually, I'll point out one more thing here. Under send PM reminder notification email, uh, this is a useful feature if you're wanting to get a reminder notification that a PM is going to generate. For example, um, my PM generates every month. I would like to give myself a few days notice. So two days notice that the PM is generating uh, before it actually arrives. This is probably useful for anyone running an annual PM or biannual PM. Now lastly, before you leave this window, make sure you click validate and confirm that your details at the bottom of the window are correct. So this PM is going to occur every first Wednesday of every month starting August 2nd, 2017. So I should expect to see a PM generate tomorrow. I'm gonna click one time as well. Um, sorry, we'll actually, we'll put this one through, so click okay. Uh, from here, I can edit, delete, and I can actually add. So what I meant is that I can add a one-time schedule, click validate again. So notice that I have two schedules for 1 p.m. Uh, the purpose of me adding the one time for this p.m. today is so we can take a look to see what the p.m. looks like when it generates. So let's click OK. This will take us back to our scheduled work order grid. Next is days to complete. So how many days do you have to complete the work order before it becomes overdue? We'll change this to one week. Tasks, you can consider tasks as a literal checklist on your scheduled work order. For example, if you want your resources to follow a very specific procedure in performing this work order, you can add a task one by one. So the idea is we'll click on tasks, we'll click add, type in the name of the task. Um, at this point right now, you do have to select a unit. So we recommend making unit called star n slash a. However, in future versions of Hippo, we will not make this mandatory and you'll be able to just bypass adding a unit. For now, just keep in mind, we do have to utilize this function. Second task, um, we can add clean filter. Add the unit there and then close AC unit. So as you can see, I've got a step-by-step -step process for my resources to follow. You'll see on the generated PM, there will be a list of tasks and my resource must indicate that they completed each one before they can close the work order. With my tasks added, I'll click save. That will turn me back to the scheduled work orders grid. Moving on, we have resources. So this was covered in Express Training 1. Uh, resources are your maintenance technicians. You can choose to assign your resource any time that the PM generates. Documents. Documents are stored under the Documents panel. If you're looking to upload a spec or a manual or a photo, every time this PM generates, that item will also generate with the PM. Lockout procedures. This is a type field. 
if you need to type out your lockout procedure, you can do that in this field. Um, in addition, job hazards, this is a type field also. Estimated effort in minutes, this will give you an idea of how long it takes to complete the work order. Uh, for example, this will take an hour to do the inspection. Where this comes in handy is if you're utilizing the calendar dashboard, you will see a cumulative amount of time for every single PM. That will really help you gauge how much work you have this day, um, maybe allow you to move PMs further or backwards and balance out your work week. Estimated cost, uh, if you're estimating a cost before a work order, this is a type field also. Floating, floating is a means to prevent PMs from piling up. Uh, the example I'd like to use is if you have a PM that generates on a daily basis um, and you aren't, you haven't completed the one before, the next one will not generate. That means if I don't complete my PM for today, tomorrow will not generate and I don't have to worry about having piles and piles of scheduled work orders. Generate multiple. Generate multiple um, applies to selecting more than one association. For example, if I pick two air compressors, I will get a PM ticket for each one of these associations. Uh, the benefit there is if you have a PM generate for uh, air compressor two and the process takes a very long time, you can go ahead and complete air compressor one without waiting for the other to finish. Then we have company and contacts. So this refers to any outside contact, um, maybe a vendor, a third party that comes in to perform work. They are stored under companies and contacts and when selected, uh, they will get attached to the work order and depending if you've added their email or contact, uh, they could get notified about the work order. Then the last two columns are important as well, the last generated schedule date. So when is the um, last time this PM generated and then when is the next time the PM generated? So it looks like it's actually going to be for today. Um, in that case, I'll click save. So now we've just created a PM, and because I've selected one time as a generation date, we should expect our PM to generate today. Now, before we um, move on and take a look at the generated PM work order, uh, let's look at work order templates. So work order templates are essentially creating a template of a scheduled work order. Um, that is done at the enterprise level. So again, to move backwards, use the close button. This is my facility screen. To go back to enterprise, use the breadcrumb trail and look for enterprise admin. Now, if you do not see this panel, it may mean that you do not have permission to enterprise admin and you may need to ask your local HIPPO administrator to set up a work order template for you. Within this panel, you can see that this grid looks very similar to our schedule work orders grid. We've got mandatory fields. We've got optional columns. We're going to go ahead and create a template that can be used in multiple facilities. Um, it can be used in the same facility multiple times. The whole purpose of work order templates is to save you time uh, from data entry. So I'll make this template. Type is equipment, location, or vehicle. We'll pick equipment. We'll type in the description again. And those are my mandatory fields. Um, I can choose to complete the rest of the optional fields, but however, I will select just a few. So work category, I can determine that here. Sure, I can pick HVAC. Days to complete, I can pick seven. Under schedule, I will likely save that for when I'm at the facility level. Um, my schedules between different facilities may not be the same, so it's best to leave this empty. 
Under tasks, this is a big one. So I like to use work order templates when I have um, multiple uh, types of preventative maintenance and each of them has multiple tasks. For example, I'm gonna type in task number one, task number two, and let's say this is a big job, this is task number 20. Now imagine doing that for five different facilities, five PMs, putting in 20 tasks. That's a very, very long amount of time that you would be entering data into your hippo. So if you ever have a procedure that takes 20 tasks, always make a template to save yourself some time in data entry. Those are all the fields I'm gonna complete. We're aware of what the last ones are. I'll click save. So now that I have my task added, um, we're gonna go back to the facility level. Uh, maybe this time we'll go to a different facility. We'll pick the Hippo Arena. Under scheduled work orders, we're gonna make a work order off of that template. Okay, from template. And maybe we'll pick uh, this one, demo template. Click okay. So here it is, it has the information I captured from the uh, work order template level. See task list. I've got my tasks in there. And then all I have left to do is select my associations. I'll pick a few of them. Now, if you wanted to use this template again in the same facility, so I picked demo template. It's very important that after you select your associations, you cannot have two PMs with the same name. So these have to be different. All right, so main idea is that when you make a template, you can use the template in multiple facilities. You can use it multiple times. The goal is for you to save time in terms of data entry, where if you have a template that has 30 different tasks, enter it once, just copy paste immediately by using the from template schedule option. All right, so next we're gonna discuss meter-based PMs. So for this example, I will go back into my Hippo plant facility. All right, so back to scheduled work orders. So we had two types of, uh, sorry, two cal categories for schedules for PMs, calendar-based and meter-based PMs. Um, meter-based PMs are PMs that generate off a specific meter reading from a piece of equipment. For example, um, I have a, my air compressor. If I look at it and it's reached 1,000 runtime hours, PM will generate based on the amount of hours that I set within the system. Uh, there's a few steps that you have to take before you create a meter-based PM, you first have to create the meter reading unit. So you must tell Hippo that you're working with runtime hours. Next, you have to um, apply that runtime hour value, um, sorry, runtime hour unit to an equipment model. And then third, you need to punch in your um, meter reading unit value for that equipment. So let's start with step number one. Go to the enterprise level. Under Enterprise Admin, look for categories and types. Again, if you don't have access to these, you may need to contact your, your company's HIPPO administrator. Under Category and Type, look for the Meter Reading Units option. So the Meter Reading option, um, you can see things have like kilometers, liters, miles, revolutions per minute, runtime hours, 
um, if I want to add a new one, make use of the add button and then type in the three fields name, symbol, applicable to, could be either equipment, vehicle, or both. I'm going to delete this field because of the one that I will use as an example. It's already here, runtime hours. So our next step is to go into the facility. So into the facility. Now we need to take that meter reading unit and apply it to a specific equipment model. So step two is go to the equipment models panel. From here, I can look for my equipment model. We'll pick this guy. Look for the meter reading unit column and select your meter reading unit from the drop down list. So I've assigned runtime hours to this specific model, and therefore, each of these pieces of equipment, air compressor zero, will take a value of runtime hours. So that's step two. Step three now is to go to the equipment grid. So we saw that the air compressor zero is related to that model that I selected. Here we are. Look for the column that says meter reading. This is the, re the, the reading that you would see from your piece of equipment. So if I walk up to my air compressor, I see that it's at 100 runtime hours. I'll type in 100 runtime hours into this meter reading field. Always remember to click save if you're changing data on a grid. If you close this out without saving, it won't enter that data in the right, right spot or at all. OK, so I've done my first few steps. Now I'm ready to go back to the scheduled work orders grid. Now, this process is similar to creating um, a calendar-based PM. Again, click New. We're going to create a PM from scratch. Type in the name of what needs to be done and when. So air compressor, runtime hour, maintenance. Instead of calendar, we're going to select meter. Under equipment, we choose equipment or vehicle. And then our next field associations will show two drop down menus. The first on the left will show you um, a list of uh, meter reading units that apply to equipment. So I'll pick runtime hours. And then the next drop down list will show you all the pieces of equipment that apply to runtime hours. So I'll pick air compressor zero. Great, so that's entered there. Next, we have description. What is the description of this meter base PM? Uh, we'll call this runtime hours maintenance air compressor. So I'm just going to expand that so it looks a little bit neater. There we are. Lastly, pick your work category. This is uh, general maintenance this time. So I've got my mandatory fields completed. It's selected as meter. I pick my runtime hours. And then I'll click Save. All right, so we're not going to go through every single column on this grid. However, we'll go through the most important one. So again, find your um, meter-based PM you created. Here we are. And we'll look at the schedule window. So because I created a meter-based option, this is going to look a little bit different. Instead of picking calendar dates and punching in either uh, a value that occurs every X amount of runtime hours or a value whenever runtime hours exceed or less than a specific value. In this example, I'm going to say my PM will generate every 50 runtime hours. Um, here's the list of associations that will appear. 
you must indicate the reading of your last completed PM. If I've never ran a PM for this piece of equipment, simply type in the current reading. So these two will be the same. Now, based on the numbers I punched in, I should expect to see this PM generate when the value is 150. That is, um, this is the reading of my last completed PM. When this reaches 150, which is every 50 runtime hours, I'm going to see a PM generate. Um, here, you can select to receive an email when your meter reading is reported beyond a specific value for runtime hours. I'm going to go ahead and click refresh. This is going to run every 50 runtime hours. We'll click OK. There we are. And then I'll click Save. So I've punched in all of my uh, correct info for my meter base PM. Now, what happens next is time will pass, your air compressor will run. When you revisit your piece of equipment, uh, you'll check to see what the meter reading is on the piece of equipment. I walked over to my air compressor. I've looked at the gauge. It is now at 150 runtime hours. So on the equipment grid, this is important to know. This is where you update the meter reading for each piece of equipment. It is manual entry. So if you are running meter-based PMs, it's up to you to go find your piece of equipment, take the recording, log into Hippo, and then punch it in to this column. All right, now based on the values I entered, if I go back to my facility screen, my PM should now have generated. So here it is on the standard dashboard, any new work orders will appear at the very top of the grid. So I've just generated a PM based off a of meter reading. There's a description. Again, other information that you can see that you can add. We'll sort through other PMs here. This is what a uh, generated PM will look like. So this is what tasks will look like. Um, if you've added tasks to a PM, you can see um, there are circles that you need to check mark when completing the task. Now on this form, many of these fields are grayed out, meaning that they cannot be changed. Uh, this is done on purpose because you wouldn't want any user to simply go in and change these details. PMs usually take a a uh, greater amount of time, more consideration, more thought. So if you are editing any information from a PM, make sure that you go back to the scheduled work orders grid. Find the PM and then change the name or change the information that's relevant to the PM. Uh, if you're using the advanced dashboard, any PMs that generate will appear on the right side of your screen under the PM drop-down list. Now on both the um, advanced and the calendar dash, sorry, standard dashboard, you will only see live generated work orders. Um, some users like to use the calendar dashboard. Here's an overview of what's going on in my facility. Now the calendar dashboard is the only other place the only place where you can see work orders, uh, sorry, preventative maintenance that has not yet generated. So I can see ahead of time what's coming on Thursday, Friday. If I skip ahead to September, here's my uh, air compressor monthly. So if you need a way to see any upcoming work, it's best that you use the calendar dashboard view. Now, let's see what I can find here. Um, oh, here we go, okay. 
So we talked earlier about esti estimated effort in minutes. So this will give you an idea of how long the PM takes. Uh, I punched in a value of 60 minutes for my um, AC unit inspection monthly. If each of these were 60 minutes, I'd see four hours, and that would give me an idea of my workload for that day. Um, that can maybe help in terms of deciding if I'm moving things forward, if I'm moving things backwards. Um, it really helps you balance out your work for that day. Okay, so let's open up a PM. I'm gonna find an old one here with a task list. All right, so completing a PM is very similar to completing a demand work order. If you have permission to close a work order, one of your statuses will show complete or rejected. Um, if you cannot close a work order, that means you do not have permission and you'll likely change it to pending review. But I'm the resource on this. I'm gonna say I completed the work order. Looks like I can't click save because there are fields that need to be completed. If I hover my mouse over, it should tell me. There we are. So it says comments are required if not all tasks are completed. So when I have a task on a PM, I must indicate that I completed each one. There we are, you can see that I can click the save button. If I could not complete any one of these tasks, I need to make uh, use of the comments field and type in that I cannot complete task number three. You may also be a resource assigned to a work order. So if I have to add my name or if I've assigned my name, I must type in how long I took to complete the work order. In Hippo, we record time in decimal format. 0.25 is 15 minutes, 0.5 is half an hour, and then one is one hour. So let's say this procedure took me 1.5 hours. I can add invoice, I can add parts. Um, sometimes when you have a piece of equipment, if you've associated parts, these appear automatically. I would just need to fill out how many I've used. So I've used one of these parts. Now, because I have changed it to complete, when I click Save, now it looks like this beam saw was reported down. Um, this is another feature within Hippo. You can have your pieces of equipment reported down by a user if they failed. Um, I'm going to report this up because I just completed a work order. And I'll switch back to standard dashboard. So when you complete your work order, it disappears from the dashboard. Um, these are old PMs, but we'll see if I can close these out as well. Yeah, so notice that it's disappeared from the top of my table. Um, if you're using the advanced dashboard, it will disappear from your drop-down list and also from the calendar dashboard will disappear from the day that it was completed. Now, what happens after the work order is closed? Um, that's when you can make use of the search options in Hippo. You can use find work order by ID if you know the number. I don't know the number, so I'm gonna make use of work order search. So work order search is available at the enterprise and facility level. You can use work order search um, to search amongst all of your facilities or within a specific facility. Same can be said for reports. Reports can be run at the enterprise or facility level. Um, if you're looking for anything that's very detailed, always run it at the facility level. Uh, when at the enterprise level, it's gonna give you comparison amongst every single facility in your database. So let's use work order search at the facility level. Um, you have search criteria that you can enter. Important thing to know is that if I do not select an option, from these filters, 
it's going to assume that I want all of the options. So selecting none is the same as selecting all. Um, I'm going to keep this uh, short and sweet. We'll pick searching for a uh, PM work order, anything that's been completed. When I click search, my results will appear at the bottom of my screen. I can sort uh, based on the columns. So I'm going to look for PMs that were closed today. I've got two beam saws that I just finished. We'll click view. So here is the scheduled work order that I completed earlier. There are my tasks commented. Now, if you need to add information to a work order, let's say I forgot to add a picture or an invoice, because this has been completed, I can't change any of these fields. I must make use of the add button and that will open up a brand new demand work order form. From there, you will type in what you forgot and then continue to complete any additional fields. All right, so moving on, our last topic is reports. So again, reports can be run at the facility or enterprise level. We want a detailed report, so we're going to run the report at the facility level. The type of reports that you can run within HIPPO, uh, there are a few. Current work orders, that's for anything that is open. Maintenance history is anything that's been closed out. Um, inventory report, anything that uh, is related to parts. So if you're tracking things that are below min minimum quantity, um, use this report. And then depreciation, um, this is the panel that you can turn on under global settings uh, at the enterprise level. This will help you track how your, depreciate, your equipment depreciates over time. We're gonna do a demo of a maintenance history report. So anything that's been completed or rejected. Just like work order search, I've got options to select from. If I select none, it's the same as selecting all. I can also choose to show graphs and get a graphical overview of my reports. Uh, this button here, generate report, will open up the report in a new window. So it's very important that you turn off your pop-ups, uh, you turn off your pop-up blocker for Hippo. If you do not see this window appear, go into your browser settings and turn off your browser uh, pop-up blocker. So here's an example of my report. Uh, I've selected show graphs, so I'm presented with a graphical view of the information. The tar at the top, I've got a summary, uh, PMs, demands, and then both of them together. So I've had 80% demand work orders, um, Sorry, 80% were completed on time. We've got 16% completed late, and then I think that's about two, four percent that were completed, so that were rejected. On the left, I have PM, same idea, completed on time, completed late, and rejected. Costs, if you're tracking costs, you can look at how much you've spent on labor, how much I've spent on parts, how much I've spent on invoices, and then what the variance is between estimated and actual cost. I've got resource information. This person has worked um, 70 hours. She's cost about $5,000. Equipment information, you can see how many PMs you've had. So Beamsaw's had four, but it's also had seven demand work orders. Um, this will give you an indication if you need to replace one of your pieces of equipment. The more demands you have, probably not a good idea. This is a table showing you all the work orders that were part of your search criteria. Um, because I've selected all, this is quite lengthy. I'm going to narrow it down by using the keyword search field. We'll type in Beamsaw. So here are all the work orders related to Beamsaw. I've got 
uh, summary and table information as well. Um, cost, work orders, companies, again, all of this is in table format. So what you can make use of, there's a section to copy, export to Excel, PDF, or print out this table. Um, if you want to actually print out the whole report, at the very bottom of the page, look for the print page button, and this will prompt you to print the whole report for your team. Now, another thing you can do with reports is schedule them. So I'll close this report. Um, instead of clicking the Generate Reports button, select your search criteria and click the Add to User Reports. Name your report. So Maintenance History Report. I'll call this number two. So ideally it should appear in this list here. I'm not sure why that didn't save. Oh, okay, well it appeared here. There's my number two. Um, click schedule and then you have the option to generate it um, weekly, monthly. Uh, maybe I wanna send this every week, uh, every Friday to my boss. So every Friday, my boss will get a maintenance history report on what was completed. All right, so that's it for the webinar today. Uh, just a reminder, there are some questions that are going to follow this webinar. Uh, that will be your opportunity to also ask any questions or leave any additional comments um, that you might have. We will get back to you, and we will also send a copy of this recording. Thank you very much for attending today, and have a wonderful day.